Today we're going to be taking a look at some latest NHL trade rumors mostly set up here for the offseason. I'm going to give you my predictions of the top 10 players I feel are the most likely guys to be moved when we get to the offseason. We'll get into that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned today, we're looking at some more trade rumors, but we're looking at stuff that's likely going to happen later on once the NHL season is over and we're into the official part of the offseason, most likely uh, until after the playoffs, we get closer to the draft and free agency. Uh, obviously, there's some big name players that I feel are most likely going to be coming to next year wearing different uniforms. So let's go through this here one at a time. A lot of these players have been linked to different trade rumors here leading up to the recently passed NHL trade deadline and deals were not done. So I do feel they're pretty likely to take place here in the not too distant future. Now, uh, a lot of these players, I'm going to give you some thoughts on where they're going to go. Some of that is linked to trade rumors and talk we've heard. Some of it's just my own opinion. So I will disclose each one to you so you know what it is. Some of it, if it's just my thoughts, just take it with a grain of salt. But obviously, if there's more information linking these players to specific teams, we'll discuss that as well. So let's dive in here and take a look at my list. At number 10, I've got Ben Bishop of the Dallas Stars. I don't see Big Ben returning to Big D next year. Uh, obviously, they've gotten through the season so far with Hudobin and Jake Ottinger. Uh, he still has a couple years left on his contract. He's into his mid-30s. There is a possibility, although I don't think it'll happen, that he'd be picked up by the Seattle expansion team because I don't see him being protected. Uh, obviously, given the injury, Injury history and the fact that they don't want to lose Udobin, who they've had to rely on so much for the past two years, I really don't see a scenario where Bishop becomes protected. But I also don't really see a scenario where Seattle would take him either. Um, so I think he's more likely to be dealt maybe with a little bit of salary retained to make his contract a little bit more feasible, although he's making under $5 million bucks, so it's not too terribly bad. There's lots of teams out there who could use an upgrade and goal, and I think he can provide that. Hopefully after getting through the injury bug this season, he can come back next year. Uh, there certainly will be some question marks though around the trade given this recent history here of being hurt for the entire season. But I think Dallas will do everything in their power to move on from Bishop during the offseason. Now at number nine, we've got Matthew Dumba of the Minnesota Wild. I and mean, there's a variety of reasons they're going to trade Dumba when we hit the offseason. One, they really could use some help at the center ice position and he's one of their biggest trade chips to make that happen. Also, when it comes to the expansion draft, they'd have to protect uh, eight skaters instead of seven and three uh, through the normal format that most teams would prefer to use. If they can only protect three defensemen, Dumba is going to have to be number four because the other three guys that are signed longer term uh, are likely going to be the ones to get picked here. And some of it they have to as well because of no move clauses given out. But between Spurgeon, uh, Brodeen, and Suter, Dumba is kind of the fourth guy there on that list. And I just don't see a scenario where Dumba returns to the wild next year. I mean, he's a right shot defenseman and is, you know, getting into the later 20s now. Uh, he can provide a fair bit of offense. He's proven that in the past. And I think there's a lot of teams that would love to get a, an opportunity uh, for him to, to join their team. Now, it's hard to say exactly where he goes. Uh, obviously, if a team like Calgary made a player like Sean Monaghan available, maybe he goes there. I think that we'll see some changes to the Flames blue line. That's just one possibility for sure uh, it really boils down to where uh you know uh, they can get that top center from like for example uh you know obviously jack eichel's a player we're going to talk about here today if the wild were to get in on eichel obviously dumba could be a piece going to buffalo that could become very important as well so uh, hard to say exactly where he lands i just don't see a scenario where dumba returns to the wild next year at number eight we've got pk suban of the new jersey devils now yes he makes nine million bucks and hasn't had the greatest couple of years but i do feel if the devils with one year remaining on that contract going into the offseason getting ready for next year if they want to retain 50 percent or even broker a deal with a third party to get it down even further that they could get a team to take pk suban either for a 4.5 million dollar cap hit or for uh, less than that if they can get another team to retain a little bit more before completing the trade. But it doesn't make sense for a team like New Jersey to have a guy making $9 million bucks when they have all these young guys around. Clearly, they do need to have some veterans. They don't have a cap problem, so it's not something that they really need to do. But as we saw them do at the deadline, moving on from guys like Paul Mary and Zajac, I think it makes sense to move on from Subban as well. Uh, if they, can, they don't really need to get a, a really huge return, uh, just getting that relief 
uh, from the the contract itself would be uh, a good help. They can uh, still have some veterans around, but they can go out and sign some less expensive veterans on shorter term contracts to kind of replace the the guys that they've lost here a little bit. But to me, it just doesn't make sense for Subban to be there. So I see a scenario where the Devils do try to retain some money and move on from him there in this coming off season. Next up on number seven, I'm calling Jake Vertanen of the Vancouver Canucks. I mean, Vertanen will have one year left on his contract. Uh, the contract doesn't look overly great. Didn't have a great year this year. There was a lot of talk leading to the deadline that he was close to being moved uh, multiple times. The Anaheim Ducks were a team that were very interested. And he could still end up going there if they revisit things in the offseason. Uh, obviously, uh, by that point, you know, his contract next year, though, was one of the kind of sticking points that prevented it from happening before. But it was rumored that he was going to be traded for Danton Heinen in Anaheim. So maybe they revisit that. Maybe there's other teams. There's lots of teams out there that are going through rebuilds that would like to take some younger players in that 23 to 25 range who could be a little kind of like a project who could kind of get a bigger role, get better acclimated, and maybe you know find their game and become the player that they thought they would be when they were first drafted. A lot of these players that are not living up to expectations sometimes can benefit from a change of scenery, and maybe Jake Vertanen is one of those guys. But the Vancouver Canucks are going to have some cap issues. I know based on what the contracts are likely going to work out to, at least what's projected for Pedersen and Hughes, I don't think they're going to be, you know, really, really bad. But still, they could use some flexibility to be able to address holes in the team. And Vertanen's a small, easy contract that should be able to get moved. Wouldn't be shocking as well to try to move on from Braden Holtby. Obviously, they're Pretty comfortable with Demko being the starter. He'll still have a year left on his deal. Of course, he'll be exposed to Seattle in the expansion draft. If they take him, then that's fine. If not, I can see Holtby as maybe being a guy that gets moved as well. At number six, we've got Jonathan Drouin of the Montreal Canadiens. I think Drouin's kind of slowly losing his role here with this team. Uh, hasn't really had a, a terrible year, but hasn't had a great year either. Uh, I think the Hams are going to have some cap issues this offseason. They're going to have some tough decisions to make. They have some guys that are on expiring deals like Tatar and Deneau. And of course, uh, you know, they're going to have some other guys that are likely going to be leaving. The guys they brought in, like an Eric Stahl. I don't imagine he returns or whatnot. But still, they're going to have some guys that they need to decide can they keep or not. They're tight on cap. They have a lot of money invested in uh, some longer-term deals. And they're going to have some choices to make. They Could they lose Tatar and Dano, Or could they maybe move Jonathan Duran and maybe have a better shot at retaining both of those players. I mean, at one point here, we've had Dano, Tatar, and Gallagher being their main offensive line. Uh, I think they'd probably like to keep that intact. They probably don't want to lose too many guys here. Gallagher signed longer term, but two-thirds of that unit uh, that's quite often been so productive for them uh, needs new contracts. And I can see Durant not really fitting there long term, whereas the other guys would have a better shot. And I can see a situation where Montreal will try to move Durant in order to be able to uh, retain these other players. I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean for sure it's going to work. They also are going to have expansion draft implications here, like many teams around the NHL. Uh, certainly not going to be uh, you know, unique to that situation, but maybe they strike a deal here and trade them to Seattle with a favor in mind uh, to take another player so that they can protect more of their other guys or something. I put Seattle on the thumbnail just as being a possible destination or maybe he doesn't get traded. Maybe they expose him and he gets picked up. Either way, I can see a scenario where Montreal tries their best to move on from this player in the offseason to free up the cap space, get him a fresh start. Um, you know, maybe playing in a different city with less media attention might be good for him. I know it's a tough market to play in, especially when you're not doing well. And I thought maybe a team like Seattle might be a good spot for him. He's still a decent hockey player who has some good things he can do. He's a good playmaking type of winger. Uh, never turned out to really to be a center at the NHL, which many were thought and hoped he would be. I know that's what Mark Bergevin thought he would be when he traded for him, and it never worked out. So I think it's time for him to move on myself, and I think uh, maybe the expansion team in Seattle might be a good landing spot for him. Now, before we jump into the rest of the list, I just want to pause for a second here and uh, to quickly acknowledge our channel sponsor, Manscaped. Manscaped was a great company to deal with. Uh, they sent me a great batch of products here that I'm very pleased with. Uh, great customer service, uh, top-notch products, and they have an exclusive offer for all Top Shelf Hockey viewers. Uh, on their website through manscaped.com, you can get 20% off and free shipping on all orders with promo code TSH. That's 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com. Now let's jump back in to my top 10 list here. 
Next up on my list is Vegas Golden Knights goaltender, Mark andre Fleury. Now, I don't really think the Vegas Golden Knights want to move Fleury, but carrying two goaltenders, making that much money, uh, it just is not going to be easy to do on a flat cap world. They had a hard enough time this year. They managed to get through it. Fleury's played phenomenal. It'd be a big blow to lose him, but they signed Robin Leonard to a longer-term contract. He's much younger. I don't see a scenario where they move Robin Leonard and just to have Fleury for one more year. I mean, he's got one more year left at $7 bucks, and then he's a pending UFA. So, uh, you know, I know we've heard owner Bill Foley there say Fleury was going to retire a Golden Knight, and maybe they'll figure out a way to make that happen. Like, I don't think this is a deal that they really want to do. I'm just not sure what else they can do to satisfy their cap situation here uh, because they have so many other guys making a lot of money, and it's kind of tough right now. But Fleury is the odd man out with one year left on his contract at his age. You know, hard to say what happens. Uh, where could Fleury end up going? There's a variety of teams out there that would need a goaltender that he could be a big help for. Obviously, the Golden Knights would prefer somebody to take uh, the full amount of the contract and not have to retain any money because that wouldn't really be worth it for them, which I think was a big part of the reason why he was never dealt before when it was discussed heading into the current season that we're in now. Um, but obviously, you look around the league, there's plenty of teams who could use a goaltender. Teams like San Jose, like Detroit. Uh, I mean, there's other teams as well. Uh, you know, maybe the Flyers. I mean, it'd be weird seeing him where, where the Flyer Orange, where he played in Pittsburgh for so long. But those are just examples. It doesn't mean he'll end up going there. But there's plenty of teams that would love to have Fleury on their team. And I think the Golden Knights would get a huge benefit from it to be able to help the rest of the group with their cap issues if they move on from Fleury. But like I said, I don't think it's a deal they want to do. If it's not Fleury, I do see another big ticket item off that roster having to go to kind of level things out here. At number four, we've got Nolan Patrick of the Philadelphia Flyers. I think the former number two overall draft pick needs a change of scenery. And I think the Philadelphia Flyers are a team with the way things have gone recently that are going to make some pretty significant changes in the offseason, are really going to shake things up. And I think Patrick is a prime candidate to be moved. Now, there's other players that very well could be moved as well to really shake this thing up a lot much more. Maybe James Van Riemsdyk. Maybe we'd see either Drew or Voracek be moved. It's hard to say. Uh, I mean, clearly they have some good young players like Konechny and Farabee. Uh, they just signed Scott Lawton to a big extension. Those guys I don't see going anywhere. It's obviously, Shane Gosses Bear is another guy. Like the Flyers are a team that I expect to be super busy this offseason. And I really think they're going to really do some surgery to this roster and really shake things up. But I think Nolan Patrick could be a good centerpiece going to a variety of teams here to really help them out. Like we're talking about center rights, but we mentioned Dumba being traded for a center. Would he be attractive to the Minnesota Wild? I can't say for sure that he would be, but that's the kind of deal that they're looking for. Um, but they'd have to have enough confidence that he can be a solid one or two center. And I'm not sure that that would be there right now. But still, I mean, you look around the NHL, I know there was rumors about him being involved in a trade to the Jets when they were talking before about maybe uh, a combination of players like uh, Gosses, Bear, and Patrick going to Winnipeg. That was something that was uh, rumored to be having discussions earlier in the year. So we'll see where he goes. I can't say for sure what team he would be best suited for or where he's linked to, but I do did see reports and had sources indicate that leading into the trade deadline that the Flyers were shopping him pretty hard and looking to get him a change of scenery. Uh, so I think a lot of the groundwork's already been laid, and I can see that being a deal that takes place maybe around the draft, for example, this summer. At number three, I've got Ducks defenseman Josh Manson. Josh Manson's a defenseman that I think could benefit from change of scenery as well. The Ducks are a team in transition. They may or may not have captain Ryan Getzlev back. He wasn't moved to the deadline, but it was discussed about him going to the Vegas Golden Knights, and apparently it was you know relatively close to happening. Uh, so I'm not sure if he's returning or not, or what his future holds. But obviously he's a free agent, so he's not going to be traded. But and a guy like Manson, I can see the Ducks doing more uh, you know moves on this roster to shake things up and trying to bring back some young players. Now a team that comes to mind, not to say that they've been linked in the past, but my own opinion that would be a great fit for Manson would be a team like the Ottawa Senators. They could really use another right shot defenseman who can play both sides of the puck and kind of stabilize that blue line. We saw them bring in a bunch of veterans on short-term deals this offseason and it failed miserably. Guys like Eric Branson did not work out. Uh, you know, Braden Coburn didn't work out, which is not really too shocking. Uh, Mike Riley wasn't too bad, but they moved on from him as well. Uh, they moved 
moved on from Christian Willanen. There's a lot of pieces going out. They have a guy like Jacob Bernard Docker that just made his debut here in the NHL last night. Looked pretty solid, but still, he's going to be a little ways away from being, you know, a potential top pair regular that the team hopes he'll become down the road. But that's, you know, a little ways away. You don't want to put that much pressure on the kid. They could use a guy to play with Shabbat that's better than Zaitsev. I can see the Senators maybe trying to find a way out of that contract this offseason. Hard to say if they can do it or not, but still something they'll certainly explore. And Manson would be a guy who could come in, provide that element of uh, physicality and toughness that they're going to be missing back there. And uh, at the same time, you know, he's a guy who can move the puck and play pretty well and has a decent contract for a little while longer. He's still not too old. Like he's still only just starting to approach the later 20s. I think he'd be a good fit there, but he could be a good help on a variety of teams as well. Uh, But the Senators have a ton of picks and a ton of young prospects that would probably interest Anaheim. So that's why I picked them as a likely landing spot because they would certainly be able to put together a great package to entice Bob Murray to pull the trigger on that deal. Next up at number two, I've got Sabres captain Jack Eichel. Now, Jack Eichel is pretty likely to be traded this offseason. I can't say how high, though. I do. I wouldn't be completely shocked if I'm wrong and he stays in Buffalo a little bit longer. Obviously, he had a frustrating year for a variety of reasons. Uh, playing hurt with a hernia and a disc in his neck most of the year did not help his cause. He didn't really get a lot of a chance to play with Taylor Hall. Things didn't work out there, and the Sabres, unfortunately, had a really disastrous season. Now, uh, will he request a trade in the offseason? is the uh, the real question here. Now, many feel that they won't try to move him unless he asks for it, but some feel that they may not have a choice if they really want to restock the cupboards and really get this thing going properly, that maybe an Eichel trade is necessary. And I'm not sure which way the Sabres really view that or what their philosophy is going to be. So it's going to be interesting to see, but I would not be surprised at all that the phone calls are going to start. They're going to Kevin Adams uh, anytime here now to kind of start laying the groundwork. They probably already had conversations leading to the deadline. It was believed there was some talk, but I don't think anything got overly close or anywhere near serious because he was injured and there was no guarantee he was even going to be able to play. So given that, I think a lot of that will get set off to the offseason. But teams like the Rangers and the Los Angeles Kings were the two teams that were apparently the most intrigued before and that were having the most interest in pushing hard. And they both have tons of prospects they could put together a really intriguing package for buffalo to consider now i wouldn't rule out the minnesota wild jumping in there as i mentioned they're the team that really needs i mean i guess you could throw the other teams in there as well but the wild are a team that really needs that top center they have a guy like dumba who would be an interesting piece but will the sabers be willing to accept dumba as kind of being that centerpiece i'm not sure that they really have a whole lot in the way of prospects that they'd be willing to give up. They're not going to trade Kaprizov. We know that. Uh, they're not going to trade Kevin Fiala. So I'm not really sure what uh, they could really offer. As much as he'd be a great fit and they really need him, I just don't think they can pull it off. That's why I think the Kings and the Rangers are the most likely landing spots if he actually gets traded at a Buffalo. Number one on my list here is Flames forward Johnny Gaudreau. I can see a scenario where after a disastrous year in Calgary, I don't see them making the playoffs, that they finally break up this core, do some surgery to this uh, this roster, and Gaudreau seems to be the most prime candidate to get moved out. Now, it wouldn't be shocking as well if Mark Giordano doesn't return. I can see a scenario where he maybe he ends up with Seattle because I can see a scenario where they may not protect him for the expansion draft. But Gaudreau would be one year away from a pending unrestricted free agency. And many people are convinced. I mean, hard to say what's true or not, but many are convinced he's not going to return to the Flames. And then he would prefer to head back home in the eastern part of the U.S., whether it be like Philadelphia, New Jersey, or somewhere in that area where he's from. Uh, he does have ties to the Boston area as well. So somewhere on the east coast in that regard would be his preferred destination to play. Like I mentioned before, the Flyers are a team certainly likely to be in transition and pivoting from their current core and could benefit from a big trade to shake things up as well. So it might be that perfect opportune time for Gaudreau to head back to Philadelphia, the team he cheered for growing up, and a trade could very well materialize between both teams and satisfy a shakeup in both cities that appears to be really desperately needed so let me know what your thoughts are on these 10 players which you think are the most likely to be dealt or if there's other guys out there leave your comments down in the comment section here and we can discuss that further if you're new to the channel consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it i'd appreciate it if you did as always thank you for watching and i'll catch you next time